Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Uh, before I get started, I want to remember to say, if you're enjoying our videos, please subscribe. Okay, the next thing I want to say is what we're doing today. My friend Bobby tore up his motor. And so we got another motor and he tore up that motor. We're not sure why. Not throwing any rocks at anybody. But I think there's enough stuff that I can mix the two motors together and come out with one good one. So this is an evolution motor and I'm going to open it up and what we're going to do is just get started on it today. We're going to remove the top end. So the next video we'll go further with it. But right now I'm going to turn this motor around and open it up. Now this motor has adjustable push rods in it, so I backed off the two push rods on the front cylinder. Now the reason for doing that first is because if you leave them tight and they've got pressure on the rocker arms, what happens is as you remove the covers, you run the risk of warping them. So get the pressure off of them before you get going. Okay, pressure is relieved. I think the first thing I want to do is remove the intake manifold. So we'll remove the intake manifold. There's four bolts holding it. And we'll get those out of there. Not too hard on this side. The two on the other side are a little more difficult. There's not much room to work. And sometimes I have to cut down an Allen wrench just to do that job. Let me turn the motor around. And I've already loosened these a little bit but in order to crack them loose sometimes I use this piece of stainless steel tubing as a cheater bar give me a little bit of leverage there so once we get those loosened and the ones on the on the left side of the motor here don't have to come out all the way So we'll get those off. And then we can continue to get the heads off. Try to keep these videos kind of short and sweet. It's not always easy, but we're going to try here. That manifold's ready to come off. Let's get these bolts backed off a little further. I think those are about ready. Now these bolts have a tendency to get real tight in here and they need to be tight. One of my friends installed a set of these with anti-seize so that he could get them out easier the next time. What happened is, with anti-seize, they didn't seize, and then he had vacuum leaks. So, don't want to use anything on these threads when you're installing them. 
There we go. Manifold is off into the box of parts. And now we're ready to start on the rocker boxes. Get them off. And then we can pull the, the heads. Now we're just going to do one cylinder because doing two of them is just repetition for the person that's, that's watching this video. Now I like to put things back together the way they came apart. So I will put one head and all of the stuff that goes with it in one box and label it front or rear according to what it is. And the top cover of this rocker box should come right off. There it is. There's the top cover. And the bolts into the same box. And there is the center piece. This is a late model evolution, so it has head breathers. These are the umbrella valves that go in there. We'll worry about that when we reassemble it. Now the next thing is to uh, ah, remove the rocker arms. Here's the bolts that hold the rocker arm shafts in place. We'll remove it as a complete assembly, but this is the, I guess we can call it the rocker arm housing. Again, since the push rods are backed off, there's no stress on any of this, which is the, of the utmost importance. So we've got these four here. You'll notice I leave them in instead of just pulling them out. I leave these four bolts in because that's part of the assembly and I like to keep it all together. <clears throat> now we've got three bolts, three quarter inch bolts that hold this on. One here one out here between the rocker arms. There's two of them. And there's three of them. <clears throat> Doesn't take long to take things apart. But you don't want to be destructive either. All right. And there's two little Allen head cap screws out here on the corners. There's one. There's the other one. And now the rocker box can be removed complete with its rocker arms on it. Did I get that all the way loose? I think I did. Getting ahead of myself here. And there it is with all of its bolts still intact. Here it should probably show the rocker arm assembly. There we go. 
and there it is removed. Now let's see, let's turn the motor around. <clears throat> no, let me keep it right there. I think you can get the camera on it a little better. So we can remove the top gasket and the push rods. and their tubes. All right. So now in order to get the cylinder head off, all we need, all we need, I like to use a little longer handled ratchet for that because I don't know how tight these heads are on. And you might hear me groaning here in a minute, but they're gonna come right off, he said. Well, maybe not. Yeah, you want to crack it just a little at a time. There we go. So that you don't risk warping the cylinder head. There's three. And there's four. One. Two. Three. And four. Four. And now they're all loose. And we can just take them right off of there. And there we have there's two of them. Three, and three, there we go, and number four. And notice that these nuts, they're actually long nuts. The inner ones are much longer than the outer ones. Show the comparison again. Reinstalling those is very critical and we'll cover that when we do. Now all we need to do to get the cylinder head off is lift it off. And there we have the cylinder head and cylinder is exposed and I'm going to bring the piston up by rotating the crank so that when I pull the cylinder head off the cylinder itself off I don't run the risk of any debris falling down into the motor now this motor is going to be torn apart completely no matter what, so I'm not real concerned about it. So now I'm going to pull the cylinder off. I got it rocked loose, real careful like. And as I remove it, and it's ugly, there it is. There is the cylinder, and I'm going to put rubber hoses over these studs to protect the piston and rings from any debris. So there it is. We have the other cylinder to remove which is just a repeat of this one. Again I'd like to say let's mark all these things. This is the rear cylinder head and the rear cylinder so I want to mark them accordingly so that I don't get them confused when I go to reassemble. So that's it for today. On our next video, we'll go further. But right now, we've got the top end done. So don't forget to subscribe and see you out on the road.